Welcome everybody. I'm Irene Pasternak, teaching Feldenkrais with Northwest Parkinson's Foundation. And I'm glad to have you all here today. And um, hope that the conversation in the breakout rooms about what you love to do in the summer, you're going to find a way to do it this summer. Um, everything takes a little more creativity, I think, this year, but that's what we have plenty of time to brainstorm what we want to do. Anyhow, um, I would love it if you would all stand up. We're going to do our measurement move in standing today. And I want you to imagine, go ahead and close your eyes for a moment. And I want you to imagine, think about when you were brushing your teeth yesterday. And in relationship to where you're standing now, where does that thought in your mind of when you place yourself yesterday, getting ready for bed, where does that place you? And then to think further back into your history, perhaps to January before there was COVID, and where, sort of where is that physically? And some people tend to put their history directly behind them, some off to an angle or to one side, sometimes in a part of their body. And then think way, way back, perhaps to if you went to college when you were in college or your first job, or all the way back to high school or middle school, your family. When you think about your family, where, where, where are they? You know, for some of us, they might be heavily on our shoulders. For some, they might be very distant. Um, just notice where they are. And then for a moment, um, imagine the future when you think of what it's going to be like when the stay homes are we're done and the vaccines are there and we can be out and about again. And where do your eyes turn? Where do your eyes look when you think about where that future is? Or if you have a grandchild or great-grandchild or some other event you're, you're looking fo forward to, where, where do your eyes turn when you look in the future? Or maybe even when you think ahead to this weekend. All of our, our uh, we make timelines in our brain in some way or another. And just notice where that is. And then begin to notice where you are now. Where's your sense of yourself? Do you feel closer right now to where you place the past, your past history? Or do you feel closer in your body to where you think of the future? Okay, and then we're just gonna put that aside and then we'll come back to it at the, at the end. Um, and begin to shift your weight over to one foot. Okay. And if you want to put a hand on a chair or the wall as we're doing this weight shifting, feel free. And how do you know when you're all the way on that foot? What are the sensations you look for as you go over there? And perhaps one measurement might be if you could lift your other foot. So shift onto to, to your left, let's everybody shift onto your left foot and feel how far do you have to go until the right foot just lightens on the floor till you could slip a piece of paper out from under your right foot. And then shift over to your right foot and feel how far do you have to go before you can slip 
a piece of paper out from under your left foot. Okay, and now put your hands on your hips. And as you shift your hips, so as, as you're shifting your weight from side to side, do you go up on the side you land on, or do you go down on the side you land on? Or perhaps you go up on one side and down on the other side. Okay. And when you get over to the other side, are you, um, fully over there and you could lift the other foot. All right, those will be our two measurement things and we'll come back to these at the end. So come back and sit down. Today, my, my organizing themes in, in the class are the um, request last week, um, for walking in the sense that you leave your legs behind of getting the legs to come with and the getting stuck in extension in the, the low back. Those are kind of the, the, the underneath themes of this lesson. But we will um, come back at the end because in the beginning you're gonna go, what does this have to do with that? So um, many of you are sitting near a desk and this next movement, you're going to have an option. You could either put your elbow and hand down on your desk, or you could put them down on your knees, whichever feels more comfortable to you. So take your right hand, your right arm, and put your elbow and hand either one on each knee or on the desk in front of you. And now begin to lift your hand, your right hand, up off the desk and put it down. So you're pivoting on your elbow. And I want you to pay attention to your sit bones. How does your weight shift in your sit bones? Does your head move in space? Do you feel a little weight go into one leg and come away from the other leg? Like one foot gets heavier on the ground and one lighter? Okay, and pause resting your arm. And then begin to lift your elbow. So your hand stays on your desk or your leg and you lift your elbow and feel how your weight shifts in order to lift the elbow. There's a little bit of lift you can do if you don't move, but you'll find if you move your shoulders over to the side, it becomes a lot more comfortable to lift the elbow. And if you wanted to lift the elbow higher, how far would you have to go to lift the elbow you know, almost to vertical or halfway to vertical? Okay, good. Take your elbow off of the place it's on and rest for a moment. Now my phone's almost done ringing, <laughs> um, but it'll stop in a moment. Okay, so now um, put your arm back on your legs or on the uh, desk. And begin to alternate, lifting your elbow, and then you put it down and lift your hand. And let, let your head move in space a little, let your shoulders move. Let the weight go from sit bone to sit bone, from foot to foot so that this feels effortless, like the, the counterbalance of your body moving 
makes it so that your hand is effortlessly moving. Like your hand is light as a feather and your elbow is light as a feather. Your shoulder's not working hard. Okay, and then rest for a moment. Then put your hand back on your knees or your desk. And this time, lift your hand. And when you put it down, put it down ready to lift again. Okay. And when you put it down ready to lift again, can you lift your elbow at the same time? It's like, no, because the elbow's pressing into the ground. Now lift your hand and put it down as if you have the intention to lift your elbow so that your elbow's immediately available to lift. Let's try that with the elbow. Put the elbow down and lift it up a few times so that you, when you put it down, you don't completely release it. You just leave it down, but ready to go, and then you'll find your hand is heavy. If you want to put it down in a different way so that your hand is available, feel, feel what's different when you put the elbow down enough that the hand can lift. Okay. And rest for a moment. And then put the elbow back on the desk or on your, um, on your legs. And lift your hand and find how far do you have to lift your hand that you could lift the same leg, that you could lift your knee off the, off the, up in the air so your foot lifts a little. Or is it easier if you just leave your hand flat to lift your knee? Or is there a way that the hand going? Which knee are we supposed to be lifting? Sorry, your, your left knee when you lift your right hand. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to lift your left knee, you'd probably want to lift your elbow. So if you lift your elbow and transfer your weight to the other sit bone a little bit, you can lighten the right knee. But there's a relationship between whether the elbow is down or the hand is down to which knee lifts. See if you can discover in your body which way to tip to lift. And rest for a moment. And put your arm back on the table or your legs and find the place where it's equally even to be able to lift your elbow or to lift your hand. That, that, that there's a place between being biased to lift one or the other. It's really fascinating looking at people's eyes, even with your eyes closed. We all have a place we look. Some of you are looking up to the left, down to the right. Is there a place when your elbows and your hand, it's like you go back and forth, making the movement smaller and smaller and smaller until you find the middle. You feel what it's like to breathe in that middle place. And then rest your arm. Rest your arm, keep your eyes closed. And compare what your right side and left side feel like. Is there a calmer sense in one side of you than the other? Uh, uh, I don't know, a deep relaxation, a better connection with your sit bone, lower, more connected to the floor your foot even might feel different. Okay. Let's do this on the other side. So the other arm on your table or the legs. And first experiment with lifting the hand, trying to make your whole hand feel so light that it just floats up to the ceiling like a helium balloon. And that lightness, that effortlessness 
comes with some sort of shifting weight, perhaps in your body. Try and hold your breath, clamp your belly for a moment and lift the hand and feel what muscles work. And then relax your belly, relax your breathing and let yourself sway. It's almost like, like the wind was blowing you one direction and then the hand just floats up with the wind. And then put the hand down and lift the elbow a few times. And feel how the wind has to come from the other direction to make your elbow lift with no effort in your shoulder, no hunching the shoulder, no work in your neck, but just using the, the counterbalance. If you take your shoulders over to the, um, to the right, the elbow just naturally lifts up. Okay. Take your arm off and rest. Put the arm back. Short rest. And now lift the hand and put it down as if you're going to lift it again and try and lift your elbow at the same time and feel how things kind of contradict each other. There's a knotted up feel. And then put your hand down in a way that it's really down so that you can shift and lift your elbow. And when you put your elbow down, put it down for real so that the hand can lift. That it's funny, it's something you do with the other side to make it so that you're free to alternate. It's a very different way of putting down the hand or the elbow. And then begin making this motion smaller and smaller and smaller. Still effortless, still light as a feather elbow, light as a feather hand because of the counterbalance in your body going smaller and smaller and smaller, but still feeling your sit bones move. Until you can be at the place where it's equally easy to go in either direction. That place that's not left, not right. And then rest your arm for a moment. And see now if your left side has gained some of that calmness in it. Put your left arm back on your legs or the table. And find what you need to do in order to lift your right knee. Is that easier if you lift your right hand or if you lift your right elbow? How do you shift your weight to lift the right knee and the right hand and the left hand? And then if you want to lift your left knee, is that easier if you lift your elbow or if you lift your hand? Okay. And stop for a moment. Just feel, feel how your body is, is in your chair. I forgot to mention, but hopefully by now you all know you should be sitting near the front of your chair. If you're not, scoot forward a little bit. And begin with your left foot to lift the front of your foot off the floor with the same ease that you were lifting your hand or your elbow. So there's some way you have to rock on your sit bones to lift the front foot and put it down. And notice in yourself when you put it down, are you putting it down with the intention of lifting it again? So where you almost put it down. And then try to put it down 
in a way that if I said lift your toe, you could, or if I said lift your heel, you could. So try that again. Lift your toes, the front of your feet, the ball of your foot, and put it down in a way that if I said lift your heel next, you could. Or lift your toes next, you could. So now lift your heel a few times and feel how does your body need to move in order for the heel to lift? And notice what's your habit. Do you lift it up with the expectation you're going to lift it again? Or do you put and when you put it down? Or when you put it down, do you come back to that neutral place? So try and put it down to the neutral place where you could lift the front of your foot or the back of your foot. And then lift the heel again and put it down in that neutral place where you could lift, you could imagine lifting the front or the back. And alternate a few times, lifting your heel, lifting the front of your foot, feeling how you move over your sit bones, and finding the place where you transition. See if you can mark it somehow in yourself when you're organized to lift your heel or you're organized to lift the front of your foot. If there was a neutral marker in you, where would you sense that neutral? It might be in your sit bones, it might be in your breathing, you might transition from an inhale or an exhale there. It might be a sensation of where your head is in space or your shoulders. But where's that midpoint? If you were to freeze, you take a picture of yourself in the midpoint. Just notice where that is. And then stop in that midpoint. And compare the sensations, left side of you and right side. Which side feels more ready, more sort of alert? Let's do the same thing with the right leg. So first on the right side, begin to lift your heel. And feel how do you lift that heel? And what's your habit? Are you, I think, I think of myself, my habit is always to put it down as if I'm gonna pop right back up again, sort of that hypervigilant uh, alertness. And then begin to play with the idea of putting it down so that it actually really is resting and is in a neutral place before you lift it again. I almost feel like I have to put it down twice. Like I put it down and it touches and then I put it down a, a second time and I let it go until it reaches the ground. And then a few times lift the front of your foot. Feel what it's like, how your whole body has to counterbalance a little to make that easy. And notice if you're putting it down with the intent of lifting it again and experiment with putting it down each time so that you could decide which one to lift next, that you'd be equally ready to lift your heel or your toe. And alternate heel and toe, but marking in your mind as you pass through that neutral place where you could change your mind. You could test yourself by sometimes lifting the toe twice in a row or the heel, mix it up. But with the, the goal of this is to find that place that's in between. And 
and then stop in the place that feels in between, where the heel could move, where the toe could move. And see if now this right side of you has a little more of that ready, alert feel to it. Alrighty. So we're going to start taking this concept into some bigger movements of the difference between not this and not that, that place in the middle. Um, so begin now to lift your whole left knee off the ground. So your whole left foot comes up. How do you do that? We played, but it's, I think it's been a couple weeks since we did this one, where you interlace your fingers under your knee. Go ahead and do that. You really need to be up at the front of your chair for this. And leaving your elbows straight, no work at all in your elbows or your back. Just lean back in your chair at different angles and feel how that lifts the foot off the ground, that the foot and the knee can lift with no No work. And then begin, after you lift and your knees up in the air, lift your knee a little higher as you bring your nose toward it and feel how you curl up a little bit. Put the leg down as if you really mean to put it down. And then lift it again with straight arms. And once you're back a little bit, curl and bring your nose toward it. And put it down. Take your arms out. And lift the knee, see if it got a little easier to lift now. If there's kind of this roll in your pelvis, you can feel your pelvis tilt a little. And there's a part of your back that's reaching way back for the chair. Like you wanted to make a back print on your chair and then the knee comes up. Okay. And I want you to pay attention as you put the foot down, when you lift it, your belly is curved in. So the front of me is uh, curved. And then as you put it down, your back straightens up a little bit. And if you really relax and really put that leg down so that you might be able to lift the other one, there's an uprightness in your body. So there's a roundedness when you lift and then you put it down and there's an uprightness. And while that leg is lifted up like that, lifted and stay up there for a moment, it's gonna be pretty hard to lift that other leg, isn't it? It's, it's, it's fixed. Let's do the same thing with the other leg a few times. So straight arms under it, leaning back in different directions. So it's by taking your shoulders backward that the leg just effortlessly floats. Your leg is like a helium balloon. Really tipping back quite far, okay? And then tip back so that the leg is as high as it comfortably goes. And then bend your elbows and bring your nose toward your knee. As if you wanted to scratch your knee on your nose. You might have to have a very long nose, just pretend. And put it down and put it really down so that it might be easier to lift the other leg next time. And then lift that knee and bring it close to your face. Feel how your belly pulls in, your pelvis rolls back. Imagine scratching your forehead on your knee. And then as you put it down, feel that moment where your arms straighten and your torso straightens. So there's this curl and put down. Now take your arms out, rest for a moment. and lift the knee and put it down. 
It's as if some part of your mid back is trying to reach back for your chair. Your nose is kind of reaching toward your knee. Your weight's all on your other sit bone. Good. So now lift one knee and put it down as if you're going to lift it again and try and lift your other leg. You feel how it gets stuck? Okay. So lift that same leg again. You lift it and this time put it down as if you wanted to stand up on it. And then lift your other knee. So I want you to feel that moment where you transition your weight from sit bone to sit bone so that the other knee feels light to lift. And see if you can find a place in the middle as you do that, where as you put your foot down, you could lift either leg next. So there's this middle that before you could lift a leg, you'd still have to shift a little to one side and then you could lift the leg. And you put it down, you shift and you stop right in the middle where neither leg really can lift. And then you cross that middle and you can feel where the other leg can lift. There's something about being able to cross that middle that frees the leg to lift. But if you don't, if you stop before you get to that middle, the legs get stuck. So it's this completely getting over to one side so you can lift a knee and put it down and then getting over to the other side. Good. All right, rest for a moment. Rest and feel the sense of calmness, alertness, um, symmetry, asymmetry, whatever you sense in your body right now. And come on up to standing. I'm gonna come up to standing too. Doesn't work for my background, you see. My skeleton gets cut off. And you can push your chair out so your legs aren't touching it. Um, or if you feel more comfortable in standing, having the chair in front of you where you can put your hands on the back because we're going to be shifting weight again. And now um, put your right, oh, put your hands on your hips again and shift your weight left and right. And feel if anything is different from the beginning when you did that. And if you're sitting on the floor while, while this is happening, shift your weight and sitting from sit bone to sit bone, you could put your hands behind you to support yourself on the floor. And begin to find the place, so you'll be, let's everybody put your weight on your right foot and shift, find the place that's in the middle where you're not right or not left, and then cross that line so you go to the left. So it's a very deliberate approaching the middle slowly so you feel when you're there. And feel, do you get taller in the middle or shorter in the middle? But most importantly, it's the sensing. When am I in the middle? And when am I left? And when am I right? Okay. Now, put your right foot out like a kickstand. So it's out at a little angle to the side, but still on the ground. And Begin with your 
uh, left hand, put your left hand now, slide it around so it's in the back of, on the back of your pelvis and your finger is pointing out toward your hip and the, the heel of the hand on the back of your pelvis. There's, there are two muscles in there, your gluteus medius and gluteus minimus. So they're under the big top level of your glute, but a little deeper. And when you squeeze them, you'll find that it helps transfer your weight onto your left foot. So under your hand, you're trying to squeeze in there and you'll find it pulls you a little bit onto that foot. And you'll find, now put your hands back on your hips, that when you do that, it pulls the hip on that side down. You squeeze your bottom on the left side and it pulls you, pulls, it, it's like taking your whole pelvis and tilting it a little bit. This, you can alternate your hand, feeling the hips move and feeling the muscles in your butt squeeze together to pull you over there. And feel how when you do this, you get taller. Good, rest for a moment. And let's try this on the other side. So put your left foot out to the side. Your weight will be mostly on the right side. Put your hand on your pelvis. And the muscles we're talking about attach on the crest of, um, if you're looking at the skeleton in my picture, they attach on the back of this rim and they go to the back of this bone on your thigh. And so they're taking your that part shortening pulls your hip down a little and the other hip lifts. Just play with that muscle a little bit to feel how you get lifted over your right leg now and you get a little taller. and rest for a moment. Just rest in standing. Yes, this whole thing can be done lying down. So if anybody's having trouble with standing or wants to take a break from it, you can do it imagining it while lying down. But now with your two feet under you, spread them a little wider than usual. And it's interesting, it works differently in this position, but um, squeeze one side of your butt to bring you over to that side, and then squeeze the other side to bring you over. And now you can lift up a heel a little bit to go from one side to the other side so that you get a little bit taller as you get onto each side. And there's a way that the side you're going to, that those muscles in your bottom help you get there. And begin to notice when you're in the middle and when you're on one side, when you're in the middle and when you're on the other side. Okay, walk around for a moment just to take a break. And then come to standing. 
And this is one you might want to have a place to put your hand on the back of your chair or on a wall might be better if you're for some of you taller folks. Um, because I want you to slide your foot a little forward so it's in front of you. And feel as you slide your foot a little forward, the belly on that side can pull in a little bit in order to help that slide forward. This is like when we were lifting our leg on the chair, that whole side of your pelvis, it's like here, curls forward a little in order to slide the leg forward. You could put your hands, if you're stable enough here or one hand there while you're holding on with the other and feel to slide your foot forward that your pelvis has to tilt. And then slide your leg backward a little bit and your pelvis has to tilt a little the other way. You can help it with your hands tilting it back and tilting it forward. Your foot sliding forward and backward. Rest for a moment. That's hard work keeping all your weight on one side for a moment. And then find the place that isn't a little forward and isn't a little backward. Just make this smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until there's a neutral place. And then go back to forward, find the neutral, find back. Find the neutral, find back. Rest for a moment. And let's do this a little bit on the other side. So you slide the leg forward and you pull your belly in when you do that, tilt your pelvis a little, and then slide it back and tip your pelvis the other way. Just feel how there's a torso movement that goes with that leg swing. And then make it smaller and smaller and smaller until it's neutral. And then forward, stop at neutral. Backward, stop at neutral as it comes forward. So I'm seeing Bill there. I think you'll be better off with your hand on a wall rather than holding hands. You'll be stabler. So that the chair is a little low, it makes you bend over. Yeah, there you go. Then you can put your other hand, the hand away from the wall, put on your hip. Um, put it, on, uh, sorry, on, on your buttock in the back. Um, one hand on the wall, one hand on the buttock. There you go. And that way you can feel as you slide that leg forward and back on the floor. And that there's this pelvic tilt motion as you're as you're doing that. Okay, rest for a moment. Rest in walking. Just feel what's it like to walk after this? Just training the brain to find what's not left, not right, not flexed, not arched. Helps with a sense of uprightness usually. And I'm curious now, um, just stand for a minute wherever you are. And imagine now, think about your past. And, um, you know, from last night to years ago, where is it? Do you experience it a little differently when you think about your past? Is it in the same place or different? Is it bigger or smaller? 
and think about the future. Where's that? And where in you is the now? That place that isn't going backward, isn't going forward, just in the moment. And then come and have a seat in front of the computer and we'll talk for a few. I'm very curious how this lesson was for you guys. What did you notice? What's changed? What are you taking away from it? Uh, Scott. I was surprised by the first, first uh, motion when we had our, our hand, our arm crossed on our legs. It took a lot of it. It took a lot of work from my lower back and my legs. Is that, is that right? Um, you made it sound like it should be kind of not so much of an effort to lift the, to lift the hand and to lift the elbow, but I found I was using my low back quite a bit to do that. Um, my guess is that you weren't shifting your weight quite enough. Because if you don't shift your weight, it's a lot of work in the back. But if you shift your shoulders further to one side, it's, it's, um, it's not so much work as counterbalance. It's like your your whole body distributes the effort. So you could have been more emphasis on shifting the pelvis to get you to rotate your upper body to do that? Yeah, uh, try, try your hand on your legs now and lift one sit bone off the chair and see, does that make it easier to, to lift your elbow or your hand? And then lift I the other. I was trying to keep my feet flat and my feet are now lifting, so maybe that was it. Ah, so it's possible to lift your pelvis without lifting your feet to lift one side of the pelvis. Um, yeah, not in my body. <laughs> not in your body at, the, at this moment. Okay. At this moment, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, well, I was just curious. Okay, no, that, that gives me some good ideas for, for next week's lesson. Yeah. And in the future, if there's a moment like that where I'm saying something should be light as a feather and you're feeling like, I'm a brick of, of lead here, um, or, or, you know, I'm working hard. Raise your hand and say something right then, because that'll help me come up with some new ideas for, for finding it. Uh, Barbara, I got to unmute yourself. Um, for the seated exercises, my knees were doing so much of the work. That's where my, my, I couldn't take my knees out of the program. So the knee, for, for especially for the lifting the foot, either the front or the back of the foot, the knee is definitely in the program. And for shifting your weight left and right, the knees are definitely in it. They're, they're part of that shifting process. Was it an uncomfortable shifting feeling in the knees or? Yeah, it was that the, the effort was coming from my knees and, it, and not from the part of the body that to be focused on, like the, the hip and the pelvis. Um, the, the, the strain, and my knees are strained. The knees are, are straining. Okay, so that either means the feet or the pelvis is being a little bit not responsive enough. So if you, if you feel, uh, if there's a part of your body that feels overworking, it's usually something below it that's not helping. And so, so like as if, as you're sitting in your chair now, try pressing in your heels to shift your weight from side to side and see if that is a little easier on your knees. Yeah, because just sitting um, taxes my, my knees kind of to keep me upright. Is your chair a little bit too high for you? Um, uh, so I I don't know. I find I like it that way, but you want your chair seat sort of, you want everything at right angles. If you're a short person, sometimes you end up sitting like this and then your feet are engaged with the floor to keep you from falling off your chair. And that is going to overwork and tax and tire your knees. So you want this right angle -ness. 
in your chair. So the weight on your feet, it should be in your heels or a flat? Um, when you're sitting at the, in that right angle place toward the front of your chair, the weight should be ideally partly in your heels and partly in the ball of your foot more toward the outside of the front of your foot. If, if the weight is toward the inside of your feet, you can try this. If you roll your feet in, you kind of end up having to push yourself back up onto the chair. And that's going to overwork the knees. Kind of more the uprightness and just holding myself sitting on the edge of the chair or sitting in a chair. Um, maybe if the core isn't strong enough or if the back isn't strong enough, but it, the work seems to come from my legs and my knees. Um, the more then that you play in your core with the sense of not curled and not arched mm -hmm. and try and find that calm spot in the middle, that will take the work out of it for your legs. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did anybody find their sense of where their past and future was changed over the course of the hour or the size of them? Yes. Maybe you want to share a little bit about, about that or? Are you talking to me? Yes, so, Barbara. Mm -hmm. um, well, my, my past was really in my heart, went straight to my heart. And at the end, it didn't. It was more, I had, oh, and my shoulders and my chest was open. Right there. So that felt better. Uh-huh. Uh, Scott? Yeah, <clears throat> my past was down kind of diagonally to the left, and my future was diagonally up to the right. And at, in the end, they kind of pulled a little bit closer together and got much larger. It's interesting. Feldenkrais can be used as a, a meditative practice of a um, sort of to calm ourselves and bring us into the now, which is the, the purpose of all meditative ones of so that you're living in the present. It's, it's just interesting to see what this lesson of, of, of playing with not this, not that, you know, finding the middle does to, to that emotional sense in ourselves. L. Oops, got to unmute. Say me. How do I apply this to my walking when my feet don't want to come along? So um, when your feet don't want to come along, it's usually because you haven't transferred your weight fully. You get stuck in that place that's not left and not right. right. Because if you're stuck in that place between not right and not left, you can't lift either leg so they don't come along. So the ability to fully notice when you're all the way onto one side, then the other leg can come along easily. And so it's working on trying to get yourself fully left or fully right, and then the other leg can take its step. Hmm. Thank you. Yeah. But the, it's one of the things that I find that with people with Parkinson's, the ability to sense the middle and sense when they're on one side or the other goes down a little bit. Um, and it's what leads to the body getting contorted into some strange places. And the more we practice that sensation of finding the middle, knowing when we're to the left or the right, to the front or to the back of it, then um, it's like building that skill helps counteract the, um, the, the loss of it with, with Parkinson's. Um, yeah, but it's something to, you know, when, when people freeze, some of the common techniques in Parkinson's that the PTs or OTs will tell you is like, imagine a ball, like imagine bowling a ball with one hand and that shifts your weight. And then once your weight is off of it, you know that the, the other foot can lift. Um, so those really tangible things can, can help you when you're in that moment. You could alternate throwing a ball in front of you on one side and the other side. And just like as you're sitting there, everybody try this. Um, if you throw a ball, feel how your weight transfers on your sit bones a little bit. Like you, you move onto that side and then the other leg can lift. And then if you throw the ball with your other hand, it pulls you over to that side so that 
the other leg can lift. And if you're walking, this throwing motion might be a little big motion for you, but you could roll a bowling ball. Although, yeah, rolling a bowling ball might make you stay curled. The, the other piece that really applies, L is this little bit that we did here of whether your pelvis is tilted behind you or your pelvis is tilted forward. Because when it's forward is when you can lift a leg. When it's here, and Elizabeth, this speaks to what you were talking about of keeping your back in this arch. If it's here, it's really hard to bring your leg, like to bring it forward. It just wants to stay back there. So it means your torso has to be able to do this rounding and arching motion for the leg to be able to swing forward. I couldn't do that. Yeah. Well, think about it and work on it. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. No, thank you. Thank you for asking. Sometimes I make assumptions of things connecting, and if they don't connect, then they're, they're not useful. So the, the questions are really helpful. Alrighty. Any any requests for next time? Knees. <laughs> knees. Okay. How many people have unhappy knees? <laughs> ah, I think knees would be very useful then. Okay. And do your knees bug you in any particular um, times and places? Going downstairs. How about other folks who said they have trouble with their knees? Barbara, for sitting in a chair, it sounds like they bother you. Oh, un unmute yourself, Barbara. Oops, it didn't go. And meanwhile, Keith, while Barbara's working on unmuting. Well, when, when I roll over in bed. Your knees bother you? Yeah. Okay. Downhill. Okay. Downhill. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody else? Any particular places knees bother you? Okay. So the knee work will let us keep working on some of the themes from today. So um, we will work on those some more. And um, I will see you on Thursday. Have a good couple days. Yeah.